You are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 9, the best of Season 2, with Jonas and TNT Dynamite. Yo. This is the last one, TNT. This is the last of the best, and the worst, maybe. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. We're going to have new content. Are, are you ready for some new shit? It's going to be live and weekly and shit. Whew. <laughs> but for now... <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Enjoy fun. the last mediocre moments of volume nine of season two. Little, little Ric Flair in your Yeah, voice. little Ric Flair there. Enjoy the show, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast, Mediocre Moments, Volume 9, Best of Season 2. My name is Jonas, I'm your host, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite! TNT, D-I-N-O-M-I-G-H-T. Wow. Uh, yeah, You're dude. changing it up on Just, these best of. Let's get it, man. Yeah, yeah. that's so. All right. Thank you all for listening. We love that you listen. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash crazytownmedia. That's where we're going to have our live season three podcasts. Also, some other streaming and shit. So, also follow us on YouTube. Subscribe there. All of our gaming videos and everything else to do with the Crazy Town, Crazy Town Media on YouTube. Also on Twitter, at Crazy Town Media for all the information that you need. TNT, we're gonna bump right into it. <laughs> we're gonna bump into we're it. We're gonna bump it like some, like a stereo yeah. watts. Your terminology sometimes, but all I'm right, let's just words. bump into it. I'm, making, I'm, I guess. I'm, I'm hip. I'm making up new words. I'm, yes, <laughs> that is what you're doing. Yeah. I don't know about the hip part, but you are doing the words. Okay. Yeah. The kids yeah. must know more than I do. The kids do. <laughs> kids do know. Episode 11 we're going to start with. We're going to talk about the Hawaiian Missile Alert. Where they sent out the false alert about a missile coming to hit Hawaii and drugs that dolphins do. Did, I thought that, did that just, oh, that happened this day. Okay, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, 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 happened. Okay. yeah, all those things. Okay. What kind of drugs do dolphins do and how did the governor of Hawaii fuck up? Find out right now. We'll talk about it in a minute. Where am I? The Hawaii fake missile alert. Yeah, that happened. That it was happened. A thing. Yeah, it was, it was a little while ago. Yeah. So, for all of a few who don't know, which shouldn't be anybody, I'll give a quick synopsis. A false alert was sent out saying a missile was coming towards your home, basically. Look at us keeping up with some relevant right. stories. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So, I found out a little, like, that was the basic of it. I mean, whatever. It is what it is. We can, we can do it. Did you know that the governor... Of Hawaii yeah. knew about the alert being sent out falsely within two minutes of it happening. Yeah. So what's the governor to do? Rushes to Twitter to tell everybody, hey, this is a fal- false alert because people follow the governor. They're going to see what's going on. Did he really do that? Yeah, but guess what happened? He forgot his password. <laughs> so, <laughs> Wait, so it says that it took him 15 minutes to like – Figure out he didn't know it, get the password recovery email, get the recovery, and then post oh, on Twitter, wow. hey guys, we fucked up. Honestly, that is, that is so Hawaii, too. <laughs> That's not the most Hawaii thing that could have possibly happened. So what would you do in that situation, man? What, what you got, doing you, what situation? You got, if I was the governor no, of not, Hawaii? No, 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 no. You're, you're a citizen of Hawaii. Yeah. You get a, a text alert that says, you're going to die in a couple minutes, man. Here comes a missile. Woo, woo, woo. You know? Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> That's what. Is that what the, whistle tips the official said. federal. You ever video about whistle tips? Whistle tips go woo, woo. It's like a, it's like 20 years old now. Uh, Bub Rose, little it. sis. If you've never seen that, you got to look it up. It's funny. What would you do? <laughs> Don't roll your eyes. It I was funny. roll my eyes. It um, was funny. Uh, what would you do, man? Would you, would you like immediately like be like, 
do something crazy? What would I do if there was a crisis situation in which my life was in danger? No, no. There was a missile coming at your house, man. Not just a crisis. A ballistic missile. Not like a zombie attack. It was like Kim Jong Im is riding one. I I don't know. I don't really have like survival skills when it comes to that type of shit. So you'd just be like running in the street with your hands in the air, going, "No, dude. I guess I'd try." Where? Yeah. What the fuck would I do? I don't know, dude. I'm playing Xbox. You're like fuck it. I get a couple games in real quick before <laughs> right. before the end of the world. Let me let me get this last well, loot box in. I I wanted to jump out and tell you something because Pornhub released some stats during this crisis time. Oh, okay, this is the crazy town twist that we're right looking, exactly. That's where it was coming from. You knew it was coming. I told you it was a quick shot. No pun intended. So Pornhub did a little bit of research. They compared this particular Saturday. To the two previous Saturdays. At 11.07 a.m. I'm sorry, 8.07 a.m. Is when the alert hit everybody's phones. 15 minutes later, 16 minutes later, by 8.23, Pornhub traffic was 77% lower than an average Saturday. So, so less people were jacking it. Right. So so basically, you think, like, people say, oh, the plane's going down. They're going to whip it out and fucking crank one out real quick before the I end. I don't of think it. that's going to be my first response. <laughs> well, anyways. <clears throat> so within 15 minutes, traffic, there was still people using it, cause it was, but it was 77% lower than it normally is. Okay. So then, 8.45, they're notified that it was a false alarm. By 9.01, 15 minutes later... Traffic was 48% higher than it normally is. At So 15 minutes after they found out they didn't die, then everybody was going to masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they were like some, whew, some, that was close. Some people go to Pornhub for the, the dynamic storylines. You know the, what I saw the other day? The is I saw a headline that said. I thought you were going to say a porn. No, no, I no. I was really waiting for it. It was like, it. what was it? I can't remember. It was like. It was a headline on Reddit, and somebody posted, I don't know why, but this movie is on Pornhub. It wasn't a porno movie. It was like a legit movie. And he was like, it's been uploaded to Pornhub in its entirety. I don't know why, but you can go watch it here. It was just like a random, like, it was just like some weird movie that wasn't pornographic in any way. It was weird. Uh, you heard about this, huh? Yeah, it was on Reddit, dude. I read all oh, sorts of shit. Yeah, I thought you might have been on Pornhub yourself. No, just watching Disney films. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> if, if you if you search certain things, then The Lion King pops up <laughs> yeah, on Pornhub. Looking up the Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> parody movie. I was. That's exactly what I was yeah, doing. There is one. There's a Scooby one. Oh yeah, there was a yeah there was a Pirates was... of the Caribbean. That one came out a long time ago. There was also Pulp Friction. They Pulp used to Friction. have that at the at the video store when there I was like a teenager. There is a Smurfs. Dude, I bet there's everything. Dude, there's so much <laughs> cosplay <laughs> bullshit out there, dude. I don't want to watch a cartoon character have sex. It's, no, it wasn't a cartoon character. It was live action. I don't want to see a man dressed in blue paint. It was a woman. banging a woman in blue paint. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, woo! you can go watch the Blue Man Group if you want to see that. That's not. They're not banging on stage. They're, they're banging on drums. Oh, that was <laughs> that quick. Pop. Actually, yeah, that was, was pretty quick. I didn't even think of it before I said it. It was like it was like That's, totally reactionary. It was some organic comedy. Ooh, did it? Didn't. Dolphins getting high. No. So. No. Why do you always do this? Because, when I talk about dude, dolphins? you're going to talk about dolphins getting high, and somebody's going to put a finger in the dolphin's ass, and I'm not going to have nightmares for a week. Episode 10, we talked about an yes, experiment yes. where a fine young lady tried to teach dolphins English. And she jerked the dolphin off, and it sucked, all right? <laughs> it they also, they also gave the dolphins LSD, and it, it didn't work. It sucked for everybody. You should go back and listen to that episode. It sucked. You personally, TNT. No. You go. I've, no. I don't want to. You lived it? You don't want to go back? Yeah, I fucking <laughs> lived that episode. Yeah, that was, like, that was like the first time after I recorded with you after like the main time. It was like, hey, welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. What dolphin are, fucking. What are they giving the dolphins now? Are they just issue heroin. Dolphins are doing it themselves. This is this is legit. Oh, so pufferfish. Right. This comes. I'm sorry. This comes from the Smithsonian Institute. A legitimate source. Yeah. Why are you trying to ruin my fucking? Flow? I'm not trying to ruin it. I just heard this before. Oh, have this. you? Yeah. yeah, yeah this I'm was, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. Well, well let's just change articles now. Nah, dude. Let's go. <laughs> let's just teach the, the Smithsonian people at home. Is a, a group that runs museums. They do legit research. Yeah. 
We have more news about our dolphin friends. Oh? Yeah. Our friends in the sea. They have learned that they can get high off puffer fish. Yeah. A new documentary has revealed this. It says in the article that other animals do things to get high as well. Speaking of what they say, uh, horses eat hallucinogenic weeds. Yep. What weeds are these? Can human eats eat these? Like, are they, why are they hallucinogenic to a horse and not hallucinogenic to a person? I don't know if you want to go around eating horse food. It's a weed, dude. It's not, it's not like, it's not made eating. for horses. It's like a, a weed they eat somewhere. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably got like a mild toxin, to- toxin in it or some shit. I know otters do it with certain types of snails. Is that on your list? No, it's not. No. You always try to ruin my stories. I'm not trying to ruin your story. Elephants get drunk on over-ripened fruit. Yep, I've heard that one. Bighorn sheep love narcotic <laughs> lichen. Bighorn big sheep. <laughs> not horny sheep. Don't get, don't get excited that. about it. Couldn't think that. It's a, do you know what a lichen is? Yes. Not, it's, don't it's, say a werewolf. Do not say a fucking werewolf. Why would I say that? Because like you're a, trying to be funny? No, I wouldn't. I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to try. This oh, shit happens naturally. But, it, it, but uh, no, it's like it's like a fern, a moss almost. Yeah, know? yeah. It said yeah, it was yeah. like a fungusy algae thing. So basically, normally when dolphins hunt food, prey, mm-hmm. they grab it, put it in their mouth, they tear it to shreds. Mm-hmm. They're like very vigorous and... and <laughs> I don't like the way... <laughs> Just because she stroked him vigorously in that story doesn't mean anytime anybody no. uh, <laughs> anybody mentions dolphins. That, we're talking that about. episode will forever remain in infamy for me. Yeah, but yeah, yeah so okay. They chew, they chew the blowfish. Yeah, we'll see what they do. the The documentary observed the dolphins. They were gently playing with a puffer fish for twenty or thirty minutes, mm-hmm. and they were putting it in their mouth and lightly shaking it. And passing it back and forth, almost like they were sharing a doobie or something. <laughs> puff, puff, pass, motherfucker. Yeah, puff, puff, pass, motherfucker. It says this was the first time dolphins have been observed doing this mm. before. It says that pufferfish release a potent chemical that when they're scared or threatened. Mm. So, but in small doses, it seems to cause a trance state for the dolphins. Because after this was done... They they caught the dolphins on film just like hanging out, like staring at their reflection in the water, like like they were like floating. They were out. just like floating right at the surface, like staring up at their reflections for like a while. Like so, they thought they were like high. I could see that. And it said by the way they were doing it, it was in a definitive pattern. So they are pretty much convinced this couldn't have been the first time that they had tried to do no, that. Like this no. is like a dolphin like it, ritual. A, it's a learned thing. It's probably also learned that when their dolphin mom walks in the room, they have to hide it under their bed. Or when quick. their dolphin bong comes in the mail and their mom makes him open it and he says it's an Xbox dolphin controller. Dolphin bongs? Did you see that video online? No, I haven't seen a dolphin bong No, it's video. not a dolphin bong. It was a, vi- <laughs> it was, it was a video of this kid and his mom intercepted the package and, it, and he had ordered a bong off the internet and she made him open it in front of her. And as he's like opening it, he's like, "What the what the heck? What the frick is this? I ordered an Xbox controller, I <laughs> and, it, an and Xbox. it was a fucking giant glass bong. Like, where would you even hide that in like your house? If you yeah, dude, why would home? you like? Yeah, I mean, come on, you got to be smart. All right, told you these were quick hits. Why don't man. you tell me how you hide your bong from your mom? <laughs> <laughs> My mom didn't make me hide it. Oh, but uh, that was, that's a joke. There was no sort of thing like yeah, that happening. Uh-huh. The Crazy Town Podcast. Forgot his fucking Twitter password, dude. Hey. Every happens to the best of us. It really does. <laughs> fucking, he's like, hey, I'm going to govern her up and let our people know they're, he, they shouldn't be incited into panic that they're going to die. Oh, fuck. How do I get into Twitter to do that, guys? We've all done that. You forget a password. Your work passwords are usually different from your personal, right? Yeah, yeah I guess so. I mean, there's probably a fired intern over that. <laughs> he was responsible for that shit. But, yeah. And you know, dolphins, dolphins get high too, man. Well, I should hope so. I mean, if somebody's trying to teach him English and jack him off, mm. season one, episode oh, no. ten. Don't watch. Don't listen to that. That's one. the best one. No. You had nightmares about it. It's gross. It's good. Ugh. Next what? up comes from the season finale. I didn't think this would turn into anything, but we tried to tell Chachmire about your car buying experience. And holy shit, did he take an, an opposite ground that I thought he was going to take. <laughs> probably the most I've ever heard him speak. <laughs> he was fucking ready. He and was like... Also the most wrong he's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What was he wrong about? What happened to TNT while he bought a car? Find out right now. <sighs> TNT, you got yourself a new car, huh? Are we going to tell the story? Should I tell the story? That's the quick hit. Oh, That's shit. A... Yo, yeah. I forgot about this. Yeah, I did not. I did get a new vehicle, yes. Yes. We had an interesting uh, We had an interesting thing happen at the Crazy Town Compound. I mean, you were here, but it kind of happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to you, but it was interesting because right. it yeah, happened we, at the We compound. had a little bit of an intruder. Okay. I will tell a story, though. So I went to go buy a vehicle. Um I won't divulge what type of vehicle because I don't really feel like it, it's that important. It's a Nissan Altima. It's a fucking <laughs> Lamborghini. <laughs> Sensible vehicle, you know. Thank you for all the donations. But I went to go buy a vehicle, <laughs> and I went to a I went to a dealership like any other person would, and uh, I started to buy a vehicle. It was a 2016, and it had a certain amount of miles on it. Well, while I was sitting there in the office and the individuals were running my credit and everything to make sure I could afford it, I was pretty sure I could. Uh, I was searching through my phone and I found a 2017 with less miles and $4,000 cheaper than the vehicle I was looking at Mm -hmm. at the dealership. That sounds like one hell of a fucking deal. It sounded like one hell of a deal, right? Right. So... They come into the office and he starts showing me, and I'm I'm just like honestly at that point I'm like I'm really not interested. Well, I would anymore. feel like I got ripped off. Yeah, I was I, I was a little disappointed in the fact that they wanted to sell me this highly it, overpriced vehicle. If you told, if I remember correctly, you told me it was like it was like twenty percent less miles or something, yeah. right? Yeah, like it was so a significant it was a year amount. You're newer, twenty percent less miles, and it was like twenty percent cheaper. Yeah, so like I did I did feel kind of taken, but I mean honestly. Look, if you want to put shit on your store shelves for way more than it's worth, that's fine. But I have the right not From to shop. From paying there. Moonlighter, we know that. Yeah, I have a right not to shop at your store. So Absolutely. So uh, I get a phone call, and then I go outside, and then I'm like, should I even go back in here and tell these guys I'm not interested? I'm like, fuck that. I'm just going to leave <laughs> because I don't fucking care. <laughs> and honestly, if I leave your shop, you know, it's, I have well, the that's right. Like, I mean, that's like you went to, like, Walmart. You started, like, putting some, like, fucking ice and chips and whatever, and your buddy calls. He's like, hey, dude, I already picked up all that shit. You leave the car, yeah, and you walk out. Yeah. So, so. I, I left. Uh, I came back home, and I had every intention on going to the other dealership the next day. Uh, I did get a few phone calls and a few text messages. Like a few? How many are you talking? I'm talking about, like, five phone calls and about six text messages. Over from, how long? From the dealership that I had just left. Over... 30 minutes to 45 minutes. <laughs> okay, so... Ridiculous. So within, so within an hour of you leaving the dealership, yeah. this guy tried to blow up your phone five times <laughs> yeah. with, with phone calls yeah. and six text messages. Yeah, all me, like, where'd you go? Me. Well, I mean, a, it sounds like you were about to make a sale, and this dude was about to make bank. And all of a sudden, yeah, you just did. vanished. Like, poof! Right. <laughs> right, but, okay. Okay, I, I see where you're coming from, Chach. But yeah. if you were, a you know, person, yes, you do have the right to you. just leave. But without telling somebody that you're not interested, when you were completely Shut interested, Shut now you're just you're setting yourself up for that that phone blow. Okay, oh. the, 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 right, right, okay. And then I get and I get where you're coming from on that, Chach. But here, here's where here's my thought on that process. If if somebody if I was a salesman and somebody left, I would try to call them. They did once. I would then se- maybe send them a text message just saying, like, hey, where'd you go? And then maybe, like, two hours later, try to call them one more time. Yeah, but if, maybe if the that, next day. at that point, like, 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 I, like, I think I told you this that day. What if you got a, what if that phone call was your wife's in a car accident, come to the hospital? It could have You been. don't have time to go into the fucking dealership and tell them that. You're yeah. going to dip and go to the fucking hospital. Yeah. And if this is blowing your fucking phone up while you're at the hospital with your wife, Fuck him. You know what I mean? <laughs> I would be so pissed off. Hon- honestly, honestly, ju- trust me, Chach. The story gets worse. Oh, I'm okay, not, sorry, I'm Josh, not Josh, mad Josh. about the calls. I'm not mad about the text message. But I'm they just kind of putting a frame of reference yeah. together At for the At the point listeners. where they got to the point where I would have been like, this is excessive, they stopped with the calls. Because, like I said, five, five or six text messages, five or six calls, I'm like, all right, it's starting to get excessive, and then they stopped. Right. But, you know, my, my, my mindset, like I said, though, is like, what if you had an emergency? Well, you just got to make that sale. I understand. But what's the... 
I mean, what, what's the where's the, the cooth? The, the 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 point is is that he was right because I didn't have an emergency. Right, right, right. right <laughs> like right. we can deal in hypotheticals, yeah, but yeah, the yeah. truth of the matter, I just fucking left. Okay, listeners, there is more to this story. So there go ahead more. and continue. So I come I come back home and uh. I'm, I'm just like in in my room searching online to see if I can find anything better, an even better deal, trying to look at other vehicles as well. And there's a knock at the crazy town compound door. So I dun, meet, dun, I, dun. I, I immediately alt tab and I'm looking at our, our camera system, our camera security system. <laughs> And, and they have a they have a, a a picture up in front of the camera. Yeah, so it like it's it does a retinal scan of the guy, and it does like you know fingerprints because we're high tech in this <laughs> household, and it's the same, <laughs> it's the same guy from the car dealership. The fucking salesman came to the crazy town compound he, after he ignored his text and call. He came into our gated Talabasas community, <laughs> and he knocked on our door. And I got up, I went to answer the door. And the some bitch had the paper in his hand saying, "Hey, what happened to you? Well, look, we got a good deal for you on this vehicle. <sighs> How would you react, Chach? What would you do at this point? What would you? Do? I don't know. I think I would have like at least told the person that I wasn't. <laughs> He's putting it back on you, you. Chach. Fire saying it's your fault, Chach. Chach, if you go You're to the talking grocery about store, that dude's income. <laughs> Okay, he's Chach. about to make a sale that is. Chach. Have, you, have you ever sold cars? I love the devil's advocate. Chach yeah, is bringing to this episode. Have you ever Chach. sold cars? Chach, get to your point. Have, I'm gonna let you get to your you point. Ever, you know I've never sold. Okay. A, you know I've never sold uh, a car. Uh, uh, well, let, me, let me just rephrase it. Have you ever worked at a well, solely commission no, based Chach. job? Chach, you you know yes, I have. Okay, so you know how important you that do? sale is. I sold shoes, Chach. Okay. So obviously it, that dude was that desperate to make that sale because maybe he's... Does, does that make him right for coming to my crib? You gave him your address. Trying to because he had to. He didn't like say, "Hey, buddy, here's my." Address. I had to in order for him to run my credit. Exactly. My point. That's how interested you were in buying that car. Is you gave him all that information. And then you just... if, I walk into a Mc... if I walk into a McDonald's and I say, I'll have a number one, and then I'm like, you know what, never mind. I'm going to go to Taco Bell. And then I go home. They don't come to my door with a Big Mac and a, and a Big Mac in a sack like, hey, I thought you want this Big Mac. You don't want this Big Mac now? I said you're talking about a $2 sale to somebody who doesn't give a shit compared to like a couple thousand dollar sale to somebody who that's his income. Yeah, but you know what? In Texas, they have a stand your ground law. So if somebody's on <laughs> your property, they have it in Florida too. Yeah, you can kill them if Chach, you feel threatened. I can't believe you're advocating for this guy. He's not that desperate. Obviously, he is. There's no but way. he followed you to your fucking house. He. <laughs> Chach, would you be mad if some guy came to your house and tried to solicit a vehicle to you that I was interested in? At chance, but I and then all of a sudden, I poof, disappeared. If I was interested in it, I would have stayed in the fucking dealership, Chachi. You were interested in the plant. Do you let him have all your and, and run your credit? And you know what? And you know what? My my interest in whatever the fuck I want my interest to be in are as fleeting as that of a teenage girl, Chachi. I can decide to <laughs> like unicorns this. one day, and then the next day I can fucking like Maroon I, 5. I, I, I can do whatever the hell I want to do. This guy doesn't know this. This guy doesn't know you. You are dollar signs to him. <laughs> and yeah. see, but that's I guess that's that's, the the, problem. that's my whole point I'm right there human. is he he was so enthralled about the money like but back to my prior point granted he just left he didn't want to but like say this say he had a wife and his wife was in a car accident and this dude's coming to your fucking house trying to be like well, you if he had a wife and his wife was in a car accident he wouldn't be in his fucking house well yeah he would have fucking put him on GPS track and found him at the hospital took that shit sure. up there too you gave him your address. That's how he found you. Chachi, I didn't have a choice. There's no way for me to get the vehicle. It's like I give the people at the, the deli my fucking card. That doesn't mean that they can go check my bank you account. Give the out. people at your deli your address. Well, needless to say. All right. So, yeah, let me let me nothing, get back to how I handled it. No, nothing. No, yeah. So but, I shot him. 
<laughs> yeah, he's dead. <laughs> so I shot the guy, obviously. You came to my So he opens the door and he's like, Hey, you know, like, hey, I got this deal. I'm like, dude, I can't believe you just came to my house like that. He's like, Yeah, but you were there and then you left. I just wanted to see if you're about to sell. Look, they're gonna give you more and you trade it. And I was like, Nah, I'm good. He's like, really? I was just like, where are we at on this deal? I'm like, uh, I'm going to be here, and you can leave. You can have a nice day. Totally calm. I didn't pull the piece out. <laughs> I did not. I acted like a like a civil person because I didn't want him to think, like, you know, like he was in danger, but you are in danger. <laughs> <laughs> you are in danger. Don't come to my fucking house. It, it, it blew my mind a little bit that he made the step to come to the house. I mean, like, okay. I get Chacha's point, it's his money, whatever. But you think if you call someone five times and text them six times and they don't respond, like, they're going to be happy that they that you showed up at their fucking think, house? Yeah. Like, their phone you just You think died. he was happy that you just magically disappeared? That's part of his job. Exactly. That's part of time. his job. But what car Coming dealer does house, house visits, bro? Well, that's no the dealership point. does house the visits. The boss is telling him to go make that fucking sale. You had him here. He was sitting there. You have all of his information. And now you don't know anything. Yeah, that's but that's almost a privacy violation, I would think. Not to mention that our, our Talabasta's community, gated community, mind you, uh, with security checks, y- y- there's no solicitation. And we also have – there He's is not soliciting here. a sale. You were interested. He, what the fuck do you call you that? He came here with the intention of selling me a car. He didn't come here to hang out or ask how I was doing or he check was, up on me. He had a paper in his hand with money for my trade-in and the price of a car that was vastly overpriced. Just randomly just knock on your door and be like, try to sell you a car. You were sitting at his fucking desk. You gave him all your fucking information. Man, we never hear from the guy who worked at the car dealership. Yes. Chach, Chach, did you ever go to anybody's house? No, because I don't care. Did you, I was in a ever... <laughs> <laughs> Thank I you. Didn't, I didn't anyway, you. you know, I'm really – okay, I'm really glad we got to this because I I sided with TNT. I was like, I can't believe this motherfucker came to the house. Then Chach is pulling the devil's advocate card out on us to come from the other side, from the salesman side. He's blaming me for giving the guy my information. I you were not had telling the dude the that you were interested when there was no emergency. Chach, let me ask you a question. Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay, okay, but there wasn't an emergency. So why couldn't you get five me... seconds to be like, dude, I'm not interested, and then leave? Because I'm inconsiderate, Chach. He's okay. Like, that's why. That's why this whole, this whole chain of events happened. Because you just neglected to tell him no when you told him yes wow. already. He's not he's not a hundred percent wrong. No, he's not. <laughs> he's wrong, but he's not a hundred percent. You're not wrong, but you're not right, Chach. Right. But see, see <laughs> serious that this. maybe he shouldn't have gone to the lengths that he went to try to make this sale, but he's not one hundred percent in the wrong. Because like I said, he's not a door to door salesman trying to sell you something that you're not interested in. You were interested. To the point where you gave this motherfucker information about you. Information. I think he crossed the line coming to the house. Hand out to, like, everyday people. Yeah. Okay. So what about this scenario, then? You meet a girl. You you, you, you make her think you're interested in her. You, bring you take her, back. her out on a date. You guys have a nice time. You, you go out on a date. You have a nice time. You you swing by the house because you forgot your wallet, so she sees where you live. You take her out. You have a nice time. You stop calling her. You stop replying to her texts. It's out of line for her to show up at your fucking house. Is that out of line, Chach? Because obviously That's you were interested. Different. She knows where you this live. This is not business. Get the That's fuck the out of here, Chach. Same business. thing. That, that is, is not money. It might be money for her. Business. But that yeah, is not. The currency is love, legit. Chach. <laughs> The Crazy Town Podcast. I want to know what everybody thinks about what Josh Myers said. Who was in the right? Who was in the wrong? Or were both people wrong? I was inconsiderate, but I was far from wrong. Yes. Was he was well inconsiderate, my... and he was far wrong. Yeah, I was well within my right to leave a store and not to expect to be solicited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. To that extent. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you man. Coming up next, episode three. Way back. Trials by ordeal. Okay. Do you yes. remember this one? You always forget no, it. I, I think I played this video game once. 
Yeah, snow. Isn't it's motorcycles. the medieval. It's the way they used to tell if people were lying in the medieval days. No flips on motorcycles. No sick, sick BMX Tri- tricks. Trial, trials HD. Yeah. Fucking okay. this guy. All right. All right. All right. Find out what trials by ordeal is, and we'll be right back. I do want to start today by asking you: Have you mm-hmm. ever heard of a trial by ordeal? Oh. Ooh, something to add to the knowledge book. No, I've never heard of this. All right. So this is something that they used to do back between the 9th and the 13th century, and it was a way to determine whether someone was guilty or not guilty. Like before, I guess, we had trials, like regular trials. This was trial bought by ordeal. It's like throwing witches in the water if they float or some shit? Kind of. I'll, I'll I'll go through it. it it's kind of neat, like it it, it kind of solves itself, but it, it's pretty it's pretty interesting how they used to do this. Okay. It uses the ideal that the only really one person knows if they're truly guilty, and I'm not talking about like God. I'd be mean, like the person being accused obviously knows if he's guilty or not. Okay. And, and then if there's like a victim, I guess they would know. But in the eyes of God, you know, back then everybody mm-hmm. was afraid of God like crazy, you know, back in the 9th and 13th century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they would do, if someone did something and the evidence was lacking, they would call upon God to inform them about the, like, the status of the defendant. Okay? Okay. They would call this judicial ordeals. Okay. Yeah. There was, so they use different things such as dunking someone in holy water or walking barefoot across burning coals. Okay, fuck that. <laughs> right. <laughs> but the one I want to touch on, the most popular one, the, t- the two, was it was called the ordeal of boiling water or the ordeal of burning iron. None of those sound like a pleasurable experience. <laughs> right? Right. So what they would do, the boiling water one was basically you would have to plunge your hand into a cauldron of boiling water and grab a metal ring out of the bottom of the cauldron with your hand. The iron was that you took a, a piece of burning iron and carried it in your hands for a certain amount of time. What the fuck? A few days later, they would check your hands, and if your hands were burnt, then you were guilty. What? The, the idea was that if you weren't guilty... God would prevent your hand from being burnt. So essentially it would be a miracle and you would be proven innocent because your hand wasn't burnt from sticking it in boiling water. So wouldn't just everybody be guilty? Right. That's what I thought essentially. But but you're looking at it too big picture like I was. Okay. Getting God to perform a miracle for the innocent would be a great thing. You know, if they could just, you know, the priest could be like, hey, God, let's do let's do some miracles today. Uh-huh. But, you know, back then everyone believed priests could talk to God and, and, and you know, oh, I mean, I'm sorry. Priests can talk to God now, too, for everyone who still goes to church. They're, they're right up there. <laughs> are, you, are, are you taking jabs at, at, their, at our Christian audience? No, man, they, they can believe whatever they want to believe. I just, right. I just, I don't want to let them know that they can't talk directly to God or anything. I mean, hey. All right. I, I'm infatuated with how a person's going to get around burning their hand in something that clearly burns your hand. <laughs> right, right. How do you get around that? What's the trick? Basically, if you went under the ordeal and God uh-huh. said you were guilty, your hand was burned, you, uh-huh. you, you still had to pay a large fine because you were guilty. If you were, what? If, if you were innocent... Well, be, just burning your hand isn't the punishment. That's just to prove you're guilty, man. Dude, let me just pay the fucking fine and not pay and not have to burn my shit. Well, hold on. Just... Th- this is where it all kind of I'm, I'm it all kind of comes around. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I get it. That that was my thought. I was like, well, fuck. If I got to pay a fine anyways, why don't I just pay a fine? But they would the mind. The, the, there was like a mindset to this. Okay. Because if you if you didn't want to undergo the ordeal, you can yes. just admit you were guilty and pay a fine. But here's how this all kind of worked. If you were guilty, then the criminal knew that God knew he was guilty and that his hand would be burnt when he put it into the boiling water. So essentially, if you were guilty, you would never choose to do the ordeal 
because the ordeal was what determined if you were guilty or not. So if you were guilty, you knew that God knew that you were guilty. So if you put your hand in boiling water, you would burn your hand and still have to pay a fine. Oh, yeah, of course, it's because I don't want to shame God. It has nothing to do with the fact that I just don't want to fucking burn my hand. But if you were innocent, you got to remember, dude, back back then, they believed that, that God could do things like this. Okay. okay? So but if you were innocent, you would have no problem burning your hand, plunging your hand into boiling water because you would know that you were innocent and that, and that the priest would have God perform this miracle so your hand would not be burnt. Okay? I mean, I get it, man. You, sense, you, you right? said it. You said it many different times in many different ways. I, I still don't understand where, where are we going with this. What, what, well, what are you trying to say? They did this. They did, this was almost a trick because the guilty would never choose to do the ordeal because they knew that they would be maimed. Uh-huh. So obviously, only people who were innocent would choose to do the ordeal because they would be that hell-bent on uh, proving they were innocent. Oh, or not even that hell-bent, but the fact that they were stupid comes into play. Well, I mean, back then, they assumed that everybody God could do stupid. whatever. Yeah, yeah, everybody. I mean, not yeah. saying that God cannot perform miracles. Believe me, I understand that. But, I mean, come on, that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, I get it. But they have found old instruction manuals for the priests that used to do these ordeals. So it was actually a giant ruse, all of it. Oh, because okay. Because the Social instruction manual, the, the, priest, the priest prepared the fire in private so they could let the fire cool down before they put the water on it. What? Then, then, the, priest, then the priest would sprinkle holy water over the water essentially cooling the water again by dumping cold water into the boiling water. What? And then they would put the cauldron on the stage while he was doing his sermon, and they would take it off the fire so it would allow it to cool even more. And, so, and the stage was far enough, it was on a stage, and like it was like in a church almost, so they would be up on the front where they're preaching, and all the audience would be away from what was going on. So by the time the guy actually plunged his hand into the water, it was hot enough to feel hot, but not hot enough to actually burn their arm. Dude, that's like some fucking pen and Teller type shit. Right. So essentially, it was a whole giant ruse. Because ah. they, they used the, just the actual fact that you were going to have to do this challenge to determine whether you were guilty or not. Then the priest would, would stage it as like a show, and they would know 100% that you weren't burnt, weren't going to get burnt because the water may be hot enough to turn your arm red, but not uh -huh. hot enough to actually like burn your flesh off. Ah, so, so really these priests were like the world's first Chris Angel. <laughs> Mind freak. Right, right. Friar Angel. Uh, Friar, Friar Angel. <laughs> Friar Angel. <laughs> they all had on their... Did the, in the ninth century, did they wear those, like, brown tunics and wore those little, like, and wore the... <laughs> I'm sorry, Jonas, I'm not really up to my fucking ninth century fashion trends. What do you mean if you were on Jeopardy, the ninth century Roman Catholicism wouldn't, wouldn't be your, yeah. your star fucking category? Yeah, I'm not sure if Ralph Lauren was too big back then. I don't know, dude. Yeah, they were all wearing FUBU short sets and shit. Of... <laughs> FUBU short sets? <laughs> Oh, I don't know why that's funny to me, but it's fucking hilarious. Short set. <laughs> so, but what do you think of that? Isn't that fucking crazy? Like it so is, it's crazy, but it's just it just kind of speaks to the fact of how stupid people were back then, how how uneducated. Because that shit wouldn't work today, even if you know the belief was as strong as it was back then. Oh no, absolutely not. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, people would in a minute be like, well. I'll just take the chance to burn my hand because something might happen. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let me burn my hand. Well, I mean, now everybody's so – everybody's such a cupcake. It'd be like <laughs> – I mean, like – All right, Tommy Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's so soft. Are you trying yeah, to say that? dude. Well, 
like, yeah, like, you're I right. Like everybody, like I mean, just, if this even came up that someone may have to do this, the world would explode. People would just go crazy. I mean, people still yeah. get crazy over the death penalty. You know what I mean? That we hardly ever execute anyone anymore. I don't know, man. Texas is still pretty fucking. Uh, this is the last time they did it. Oh, I think last week they just like shot someone for fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like they're just like hey uh inmate number seven two eight oh four hey guys hey, hey, what's going on I'm supposed to get out next week boom ha <laughs> ha death penalty no that's not <laughs> I always thought it was like the wild west out there oh it is yeah there's like you know there's like people with bullet bullet uh vests on like those old like those old bullet vests yeah like they, they have a cross of x across their chest it's just lines of bullets you put in one of those oh okay yeah I like they're all wearing fucking big big sombreros that are three foot around and they're fucking wearing this fucking thing. it's just yeah it's like the wild west dude it's all right yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah all right oh, i buy it i mean honestly yeah that's i mean anywhere outside of austin's like that Austin, oh, okay yeah yeah i mean it's like uh you you go back in time. It's like you step into the 1800s when <laughs> <laughs> fucking Briscoe County Junior over here. Briscoe County, fucking uh, what's the fucking uh Chuck Norris Medicine Man show? <laughs> Walker Texas it. Ranger. Walker, I thought you were talking about Doctor Quinn. Doctor Quinn Medicine Man. <laughs> Go quick, how many fucking Western sitcoms can we name? Oh God, um, Bonanza. Uh, you win. <laughs> <laughs> You fucking win. Is Little House on the Prairie a Western? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was Stairway a to Heaven. Michael Landon. I've never even heard of this. That's the one that Michael Landon was in, dude. Who the fuck is Michael? Is that, isn't that like the poor man's Mel Gibson? <laughs> I don't know. He was in like, like Mel Gibson life. And he like died early from stuff. I don't know what uh, he died from. Oh, yeah, I do kind of remember Michael Landon. Was he in a fall guy? Fall Guy was Western. Oh, the Fall Guy. No, that was uh, Lee Majors. He was the $6 million man, dude. How do you know these names, man? Because uh, Heather Locklear, Heather Locklear was in the $6 million Earn the Fall Guy when she was, like, young. Who the fuck is Heather Locklear? She was the chick on Melrose Place, dude. Like what the, the fuck is Melrose Place? <laughs> 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 Millennial Jackson shining, <laughs> shining through. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I thought trial by ordeal was cool. Do you want to do that? Do I want to do what? Trial Burn my fucking fist for nothing? No, I'm good. Thank no, you. No, I want to see if you'll, you want. We can do a trial by ordeal. You can trust me. I'll make the water cool. We can like we can set up like a uh, like a soapbox and we can like we're preaching at the park. And we'll and we'll like be like, come one, come all, watch the magical burning hand trick, and then I'll make sure the water's cool. Just trust me. Just shove your face in it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was thinking that actually when you were talking about this. What if like the priest just like really didn't like the guy who was doing the trial? <laughs> he found out he was like, like sleeping with his wife. <laughs> He's like, yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm fuck this guy. He's guy's on trial world for adultery with his wife, and he's like, I'm just gonna not cool it down for this. Yeah, thing. he's like judge, jury, and executioner, man. That's... Dude, oh, and then he pulled out his hand and be all melty like that scene in T2. <laughs> be all melty. <laughs> yeah, dude, if you put your hand in boiling water, it's gonna melt. I mean, I guess. I probably, I was thinking like, just do it real fast or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wonder. Why don't we do that? Why don't we see how long it takes to, before your skin melts off in boiling water? All right, you go first. No, it's my idea. <laughs> <I'm first. laughs> All right. Anyways, that's enough about this right now. Uh, we will be right back. The Crazy Town Podcast. So you stick your hand in some boiling, not boiling things <laughs> to prove that you're not a liar. Yeah, you're a liar. Yeah. I mean, it made sense. Dude, that's that. You know what? Honestly, and that right there, that is politics. That is what politics is. Then, that's what the fuck it is now, is just that they found other ways to fucking cool the water for certain people. That's true, man. Uh, Look at you, bringing in the fire. Alright, man. We're wrapping up all the best ofs with a fucking... The, probably the most I've ever heard you laugh on this podcast. Oh, no. Dude, people are gonna think I'm a bad person. Johnny White Trash was I'm on a, the show. I'm a good person. On the John uh, White Trash podcast, or yeah, White Trash Johnny White Trash show. That's what it's called. <laughs> God fuck. At Team White Trash. 
on Caucasian Twitter. Caucasian trash Jonas. Jesus. Yeah, yes. So we start out with a story about the World Wrestling Federation, entertainment, whatever, mm-hmm. getting a restraining order on a fan. TNT then asked Mr. White Trash if he had ever had a stalker, to which he told one of the craziest stories that we've ever heard on the podcast. What was that story? Yeah. Why is TNT a piece of trash after laughing about it? (laughs) Find out here right now. I do have a quick hit that is actually WWE related. We never talk wrestling on this podcast. Go ahead. But I got a good story that I... So... so Chris Benoit was innocent. (laughs) (laughs) No, okay. That was too far. That was too far. (laughs) He was not innocent. <laughs> no, he definitely wasn't innocent. <laughs> That's maybe why you don't use a flying headbutt as you're finishing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, you had a cocaine head, nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure the, the roids and the coke and the yeah, hookers. They had nothing to do with it. So the, the WWE had to get a restraining order against a fan recently. Oh. All right. So I guess this guy has been harassing the company since 2015. Harassing the company. Harassing WWE. People, companies aren't people, Jonas. Well, I'm getting into what he did. All right. So, so they have a training center in Orlando, Florida, where like, it's like I mean, a minor Because of league. course, it has to be Florida. Yes. Always. Everything like, in Florida. I'm a WWE fan. I'm kind of familiar with this story, but you okay. have a tendency to take stories I'm familiar with and go deeper, like <laughs> the fucking dolphin masturbating lady. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that is like, I, anyone that ever wants to check out this podcast, that's the one I tell them to go listen yeah, to. Was a, yeah, episode, was it, episode 16? No, it was number 10. And number 10? 10? Yeah, it's it's about, it's I think it's called Dolphins Learning English and Other Adventures. Mm-hmm. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first episode I heard. I remember because I'm like, crazy town. Okay, I'll check this out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know about the dolphin chick. And I'm like, but I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. You know, we always have to revisit this. <laughs> it's like the scars it's not... are still fresh. <laughs> it's and you're you guys... still haunted. It was yeah, like a year man. and a half I don't want to think about the lady touching dolphin penis. I'm so... I don't. <laughs> And then marrying a guy and living in the dolphin. Well, I mean, to be fair, she must have been good at it because when she stopped, the dolphin (laughs) took one big gasp of air and said, fuck it, I don't want to live anymore. (laughs) (laughs) He was so hooked on her hand, he just had to fucking let it all go. Yeah, I can't live Uh, without you. (laughs) What what a thing to be skilled in. (laughs) (laughs) Dolphin release. (laughs) Ew. All right. So, so anyways, this, there was a guy. His name was Alejandro Montalavo. Mm-hmm. Florida. Yeah, right? So they have a training center in Orlando where they have, like, a minor league system for their for their thing. NXT. Uh, NXT is what it's called. So this guy in 2015, he smeared his own feces all over the walls of their training center in Orlando. How Canadian of him. <laughs> is, is that what you said? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if he threw it. He, he <laughs> smeared it, but I don't know if he threw it. So, But this isn't when he got this restraining order. So in the days following his poop attack, he kept showing up at the performance center dressed in makeshift wrestling gear, banging on the doors, and threatening the staff that worked there. And I guess this happened at numerous times because the article said on at least one occasion, he was subdued by police at gunpoint. What what were his demands? I don't know. I think he just wanted well, I mean, to be part of the. the there's show. no motive here. What's the motive? He likes. You gotta, he likes you gotta commit to the gimmick, kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, to the he, was, he, was, he was just doing his heel turn. I'm yeah. like, fan. He made a heel turn. Okay, I understand now. Yeah. So I don't know. Like, okay. I have never been. We talked about this like about a week ago. Me and TNT. I have never been like such a super fan of anything that like. That I would like go to the links of like trying to like break into like their facilities to just I guess meet the people that are involved. Yeah, that's because you're no, not you can, crazy. You can just buy tickets to a fucking meet and greet. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Like right. this day and age, like meet and greets a lot of money, and if you got money, you can meet them. If you don't right. got money, I don't know, get Make, a job. Oh, he's poor and he wants to meet them, and he couldn't go no, to the meet no, and greet. No, he wasn't poor. He's crazy. Okay, let's just get it correct here. He's crazy. Normal people don't do this. <laughs> Wait, normal people. Don't so what we're saying is meth. Not even once. Probably. Yeah. Probably, probably not Florida. ever meth. 
This Florida, so maybe not meth. Ever. Ever. He's never done Florida meth. He's done other meth. He's done Alabama meth, not Florida Oh, meth. the Alabama meth. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a little different. Well, you know about that, Mr. Trash? Huh? Do you have some, uh, a hot take on that? Um, Pander your the, wares uh, on our listeners. I do know more? one thing. I yeah. do know one thing because I talked to a guy. Uh, the meth in Albuquerque, oh, New Jesus. Mexico, is not actually blue. <laughs> like from Breaking Bad. <laughs> they don't okay. have the blue meth. That was a and, genius tactic for that show, though, because, like, like it just made it – like, that. I'm sure so many people fucking thought that meth should be blue if it was pure. Well, not just that, but, like, people started, like, legit making, like, that glass mm-hmm. candy blue. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there are so many people, like, at farmer's markets selling blue meth candy. <laughs> uh, uh, and that poor lady who owns the, the Breaking Bad house. Oh, I hear it's, like, an epidemic. Pe- yeah. Yeah, still gets pizza thrown on a roof. Like, again, you're talking about being a fan. I can't understand being – like, I enjoyed the show, but I didn't enjoy the show so much to say, you know what's going to make me really connect with the character? <laughs> Walking over to this house and throwing a great big pizza on the roof. Right. You know? Well, you do it and then you take a picture. Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. For internet fame, you know? That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yes. so it, I'm glad that we're not crazy and yeah. we're not going to. Don't take pictures of yourself breaking the law, folks, okay? Like, right, it just, right. you know, there's there's a few things you don't do, okay? You don't take pictures of yourself breaking the law. You don't get a tattoo where a judge can see it. Like, there's just some <laughs> that's things. A good, that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah, like, oh, no, you're like, put on a collared shirt and get tattoos <laughs> anywhere that that covers. Right, right. As long as you can cover it with pants or a shirt, you're good. Above exactly. the neck, it's a little, little weary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's like I don't get these kids who, like, do shit and put it on Facebook Live, like, beating up, like, a disabled boy or, like, fucking killing a Where cat. the fuck have you seen this? That's, there was a news story. There was kids that, like, t- kidnapped this disabled kid that they went to school with and took him to an abandoned house and, like... Oh, oh yeah, like, a couple years Yeah, back. yeah, and then, like, people who, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, torture cats and shit and put on Facebook Live or Snapchat. Dude, have you been surfing the dark web? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, no, the cat one, I remember this kid, he thought he was like, oh, look at this, it's a baby kitten, and, like, just fucking hucks the thing like it's a football into the middle of the street. Yeah, like, and people fucking, yeah. and they don't think they're going to get in trouble for that. That's, like, fucking, like, illegal as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, like, people, like, like, there's a difference between being edgy, like, <laughs> right. maybe you make jokes about <laughs> throwing poop at things and doing meth, <laughs> right. you know? <laughs> We're getting a fucking window into the... The fucking <laughs> trash household here. Oh, this, yeah, this. yeah. Oh, but no, it, well, the, my favorite, uh, do, I don't know if you remember the chug challenge, but it was like, everybody was like chugging, I don't know, 12 or 16 ounces, I, American, whatever. But like, they were chugging uh, nope. half liters of shit, right? Oh, uh, okay. Just whatever, right? It started as like Mountain Dew or fucking Monster Energy Drink or whatever. And and the one that made it, the, the last time I heard about this challenge, a girl was driving a car. She had a Mickey, which is 12 ounces of vodka. And she said, hey, guys, watch this. And she took a video of her, and she made sure that everybody knew it was a sealed bottle of vodka. You know, so she you knew she wasn't faking. Popped the lid, chugged it while driving, posted it on Facebook. Oh, and then the cops came to her house. And then the cops just walked right up to her door, pulled, you know, showed her the clip and said, you know, this is illegal, right? Yeah, but it was for a video. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> sad, but. I wonder how that flies in court. I'm sorry, Judge. Yeah. It was for an online video. <laughs> Case dismissed. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that one chick who shot her boyfriend with a Desert Eagle, she got out. Relatively. Well, he, he, it was, wait, that was he legitimately for a video. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted her to do it. But that was really for a video. Yeah, I'm that, just saying. They tested it beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah God, but. I don't know, man. I don't think if anyone ever came to me and said, hey, I want you to shoot me in the chest with this with this vest on for a video. Do you, do you know how many listeners we'd get? How many views we'd get? If, if that's what we're doing tomorrow. You get getting a vest. I'm shooting you. No, I'm shooting you. If anything, is I just said that I'm not. I'm not getting shot either. <laughs> what do you mean? We'll, we'll discuss the semantics yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, we'll, discuss. Yeah, we'll work it somebody, out. Somebody's getting shot. Shot a 50 cal handgun. Uh, I have at the shooting range before. Yeah, I, I, at the shooting range, of course. <laughs> not Least, at a person. <laughs> and, and well supervised, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I have yeah. two and. 
I don't care what kind. I don't even want to stand in front of a car that you shoot one of those things on. <laughs> He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> like, like you, you when you feel that, like it vibrates all the way down to your nuts when you take a shot. With oh my god! Yes, you're. Oh my. He's turning it me on. Does. Um, it, you feel you feel you feel like a goddamn god though when you when you have one in your hand though. When oh you yeah, you, do, you take that you shot and you're like. Oh, you feel like you don't even look at the target the you don't fucking care if you hit it exactly <laughs> yo you get you get you get a 50 cal in your hand you feel like fucking thanos like you can just snap your fingers and kill everybody in the fucking room oh wow mm. all right back oh, to back to poop smear all right you yo, what? smith and wesson fucking 50 cal uh, revolver like James Bond had oh that's what I shot too <laughs> fuck me you do <laughs> Man, you guys like guns. <laughs> America. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not from America. This is weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I told you I'd fit in in Texas. <laughs> yeah, right. No shit. So, okay. So he was subdued by, by police a couple times. Then in March 2018, he shows up at a live event in Florida. He began harassing employees, screaming, my new wrestling nickname is Generation Flex. My dick and balls is bigger than Degeneration X. Okay, well, yeah. So, and then in April <laughs> of... Rhymes. Yeah, right? He, he can I mean, rhyme. To, to be fair to the guy, it is kind of catchy. I might... <laughs> it's kind of catchy. I might actually use that. <laughs> Just make sure you, you give credit where credit's due. Please, I want to commit this to memory. Yeah, again. Again? My wrestling nickname is Generation Flex. My dick and balls is bigger than Degeneration X. Make sure you credit Mr. Alejandro Montalavo. You don't want copyright infringement. First person in the comments to get that on a shirt and post a picture. Ice. We'll give you something. Yeah, we will. I'll, I'll do will. something for I'll you. do something. All right. So, and then, so then he's still, at this point, no restraining order. April 2018... He posts a cryptic message on Instagram threatening WWE wrestlers and staff. At that point, that's when they rush to get the restraining order. He posts a cryptic message. What did it say? It didn't say. They probably took it down. Hmm. But, hey, Fab. But hey, I guess. Fab. Yeah, right? No shit. <laughs> so I, I guess this guy has also in the past threatened to use his semen in a biological attack against WWF employees. E, WWE, sorry, not the World Wide Well Fund. We love animals. Use his semen in a biological attack. Yeah, remember like the semen sprayer at Walmart we talked about like way back when in fucking one of those episodes? Oh, where you put semen in like a spray bottle and just start spraying he people? He was spraying people with it? Oh, mm. gross. Well, I mean, yeah. You kind of have to do it that way because, I mean, like, you have to have it, like, a reserve ready. <laughs> reserve I mean, otherwise, ready. you might be there for a while. <laughs> Trying to shoot it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, like you stay right there. I'm going to get you. <laughs> like I'm just... going to get No, don't make eye contact. That makes it weird. <laughs> no, so let me get this shit contact. over with. <laughs> I'm trying to throw my semen on you, and you're not making it easy. It is, it yeah, is kind of geez. funny how, as men, we have, like, built-in atomizers that just work very bad. They're just like shitty atomizers. <laughs> like we can spray, we can spray you, but like every you gotta give me thirty minutes after. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe a magazine or a video or something. Like. Oh, <laughs> and needless to say, this guy is still harassing wrestlers online on social media. Oh, really? Said. Yeah. So he's like probably just on Twitter, like just <clears throat> mentioning every wrestler he can, saying dirty shit to them. So maybe he just thought that all of this negative attention would possibly get him into the WWE, or he thought the WWE universe is real, and like he was trying to like be like a heel, like you were talking about, like yeah. he was trying to like be part of the show. He's, he's crazy, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have yeah. you ever had a, a crazy fan uh, do anything for you, Mister Trash? Well. Uh, you don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. <laughs> I, you, you not really, but I, I do have one favorite story back in my uh, punk rock days. All right, let's hear it. Okay, so we were, well, punk metal, whatever. The, we were we were too punk rock to play at the metal show and too metal to play at the punk show, you know what I mean? But that's where we were. And there was this big, tall, skinny girl just trying to hit on me, right? Mm -hmm. And I was out of town, a couple hours down the road, whatever. And I'm like, I'm like... Like, I'm married, you know? Like, I'm I'm literally, like, almost, like, shoving my ring in her face. Like, fucking married, yo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right, right. And she says, well, where's your wife? How is she out here supporting you? And I point at the bar, and I'm like, see the redhead staring at you? <laughs> That's her. 
that's her. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I don't know what happened to that girl. Never saw her again. Like she was gone like instantly. Really? Man, yeah. all it took was showing. You could have like pointed to any woman there and been like, that's my wife. But well, even if your wife wasn't there and she would have just been like, nah, but my wife has, the, my wife was making a face. Oh, oh, like, so your wife took her out and murdered her behind the venue and like, <laughs> that's what, really that's happened. what never happened. <laughs> I'm sure that never happened. <laughs> I'm sure somebody has seen this girl since then. <laughs> somebody has seen her at some point. Fucking mounted police are at your yeah. door. <laughs> Do you know Not this young that. lady? However, there was another time. Because like I said, I used to drive bus. Okay. Oh, God. I bet you had a lot of good bus stories. Oh, and there's, there's some really sick people who ride the bus. You yeah, know? Yeah, and that's true. In all, so one, all senses of sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's one girl. Same thing, right? Just, like, shoving my ring in her face, yelling at her, I'm fucking married, fuck off. Like, she would she would get on my bus just to ride and, like, try and talk to me, and I would just oh stare out the window. like, for real? Like, she'd, like, oh, stand real, up by the bus driver's area and be like, hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and she would, the one day, this, this was the day that I'm, again, this is part of the reason I'm not a bus driver anymore, because I walk in the office and I'm like, you know, this is happening, what can I do about it? They're like, oh, avoid eye contact. Fuck you. Anyway, <laughs> that's, <their answer. laughs> that's legitimately what I was told about this. Like, anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> she contact. comes up to me and she's like, are you on all night? And I'm like, no, I'm just doing breaks. I'm done soon. She's like, oh, well, maybe you could give me a ride to the mall and I could give you... I looked at her, I'm like, are you seriously fucking saying what I think you're saying? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm like, no, you're fucking not. You fucking freak. Get the fuck away from me. Don't talk to me anymore. Do, do you have any stories that don't include you having the largest dick in the, in the world that women just can't I, stay I away from? I consider myself a good-looking person. I mean, I'm short, fat, and bald. Like, this is not... <laughs> Well, you got it's all these women that throw formula. themselves at you. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get. It. But to to be fair, the uh, the one who offered me head for a ride home, she's dead now, so that's good. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor girl. How did how did, how did she how did she die? Okay. Okay. Yeah, this is the now, best you, story ever. <laughs> <laughs> that fucking twist at the end i wasn't expecting by the way she's dead oh my well, god at one point i was sitting there going like oh fuck you know what i want to use her? at least i haven't seen her for a while and somebody's like you know she died right i'm like nope like, that's <laughs> why she hasn't been trying to suck my dick on the bus lately go figure yeah, yeah huh. well then I that's what happened i'm assuming it's natural causes could have been suicide i don't know <laughs> she, she was so distraught about the mall trip well, I mean, he doesn't care. <laughs> All right, this woman had teeth the way that teeth are jagged shards of bone that stick out of your skull. Okay? He's defamating a dead girl. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> She's not even alive to defend herself. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, folks, right. it's good to the Crazy Town Podcast while it lasted. Sorry. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh, no. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, whew, that was a good story. The views and opinions of Johnny White Trash. <laughs> <laughs> The so views and opinions of the Crazy Town podcast. <laughs> nice disclaimer. <laughs> oh, TNT. Dynamite. Oh, shit. All right, guys. On that note, we're going to take a quick break. The Crazy Town podcast. She was dead. <laughs> and he, she couldn't even defend herself. I'd like to take this opportunity to uh, kind of... Uh tell you that i'm coming out with a podcast dynamite black trash that would be awesome he's like talking shit yeah. for like 40 minutes it's gonna run ancillary to the white trash one. Oh uh, shit yeah that's unfortunate yeah man that was an interesting story though for sure so but all right man that's it that's all the time we got for all these that's 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 the mediocre moments man 
So I guess everything left is just fucking garbage. All the episodes that I mean, go back. I'm surprised you can find this much meat. In that yeah, pound. mediocre moments. Yeah, that who pound, fucking whoo? That pound of fat that we have. Yeah, no, man. It uh, it's it's good. I like giving a little sample of the season because people can go back and check out what they want. So, but coming soon, the live season three of the Crazy Town podcast on Twitch. Follow us there, twitch.tv forward slash Crazy Town Media. All the episodes will come out like they always have on our SoundCloud as an audio-only format, and the videos will be up on YouTube at Crazy Town Media on YouTube. Go subscribe to that as well, and at Crazy Town Media on Twitter. We'll talk to you all soon, live on Twitch. For Jonas, for TNT Dynamite, we are out. over.